Welcome back everybody to another edition of Plane Talk. Today, we're going to try our first question and answer session. I've got a pile of questions. We're going to answer a few today, and if it goes well, we'll do another one. Last time I said that I will plane some different types of wood. Today's wood is locust. Specifically, black locust. This wood is hard and dense, coarse grain because it is an open poured wood. They call it black locust. I I believe because of the color of the bark, <clears throat> but it's not really a cabinet maker's wood. It is a wood that had been used around farms and in industry because of its hardness, its toughness, its rot resistance. Um, this piece happens to be a good size. I may try to make something out of it like a, a box lid or I'm not even sure the reason why it's here is because it's here <laughs> I haven't decided to make anything out of it yet but it's a greenish to yellowish color when you first cut it with if, if you're cutting it down with a chainsaw you will actually see sparks fly and if you use it in a wood stove do yourself a favor be safe and mix it with softer woods because if you go ahead and load a wood stove up with locust and or o Osage orange uh, you run the risk of a chimney fire and turning your wood stove cherry red. Don't ask me why I know this but um, I know it firsthand. So that's the wood that we're planing today. Black locust. Now, <clears throat> I've got a bunch of questions here. Some have to do with iron body planes, some have to do with wood body planes. So the first question is, which wood? Which wood should I use to build a plane? Simple answer, the wood that you have, the most abundance of, that is stable and as hard and as dense as you dare work. Now, historically, you find a plane like this one, 140 years old, made in London. Historically, the European planes were made of beech. Why? Well, if you go back in history, you'll find that the European forests Germany, England, Ireland, Scotland, all throughout the Netherlands, the European forests were predominantly covered in beech. So it was the wood they built with. It was the wood they made their tools from. So, European beech was what was used. It is very dimensionally stable once dry, it splits well from the log, so if you have a, you know, a 18 inch or 2 foot log and you split it into sections to get the quartered grain out of it, works great. Works great for chair legs, it works great for tool handles, it works great for anything. So it was the wood they had. Then it became tradition. My workbench is made of European beech that has been steamed. They found that steaming it and then drying it makes it more stable. But you can make a plane out of anything. This plane is made of white oak for the cheeks, white oak for the pin, maple for the center body. This is a Krenov style plane. So I have hard rock maple for the, the body, and then I laminated on a piece of white oak to the sole for durability. 
And it was, an, it was a test. I love this plane. I don't think White Oak was the best choice for the soul. Cheeks is fine, but for the soul, it should be a tight-grained wood. Something like beech, something like birch, something like hard maple. Okay? These tools are meant to be used. They're not meant to sit on shelves and just look pretty. So, guess what? They're going to wear out. You want a wood that works easy, that you have plenty of, and it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg. Want to make your plane out of rosewood? Knock yourself out. Lignum vitae, knock yourself out. I really have no opinion in really which wood you choose. It has to be dry, it has to be stable, well seasoned. And when I say seasoned, that doesn't mean kiln dried. Seasoning wood means having the wood on sticks, you know, on some sort of sticker, so that there's air around the wood the whole time from one season to the next. Spring, summer, winter, fall, spring. You want to hit all four seasons completely. Sometimes multiple times. The thicker the wood, the more seasoning. Enough said on that. So, what wood for a plane? Doesn't matter. What you got will work. You can use pine, if you need to do just one nice joint on a long tabletop and you never do that again, you can make it out of a 2x4. Doesn't matter. So, I had a question come in about blade angles. It's a really deep question and I'm only going to touch briefly on it today because it's a topic I want to spend more time on. Typically, your blade angle, this is the blade on the bottom, this is the chip breaker or the cap iron on the top. The blade typically has a 25 degree primary bed angle or primary grind. Then you hone it sometimes just a little bit steeper. Sometimes you can hone it right at the 25. <clears throat> For all beveled down planes, all of these planes, these are all beveled down planes, all of them, 45 degrees is the standard. <clears throat> you can change that angle on that blade anytime you want, but it's not going to change the cutting action. Why? Because they are bedded at 45 degrees. So that question goes right out the window. bevel up planes, like a block plane, that's totally different. You can change that bevel and change the effective cutting angle. I did another video on effective cutting angles. You change that effective cutting angle, you change the way the wood works. With this one right now, it's 25 degrees on top of the 12 degree bed. It cuts fine, however, it's not smooth. It's pulling, it's pulling the fibers up a little. So if I take my jack, which has a chip breaker, I can get rid of that. So there's no benefit in some instances to a bevel up plane with a low angle blade. You raise that angle up from 25 to, what did I figure, 33, 38, 43 and 48, any of those. You raise that angle up, you'll get up to your pitch, you'll eliminate tear out. So that'll be a whole nother story. We go on to the next question. Adam asks, why do hand plane guys think they're better than the rest of us? <laughs> 
I, I had to include that one. Why? Because there's a perception that people who use hand planes think that that's the only way to work wood. It's not. Of course, naturally, it's not the only way to work wood. However, I'm talking to you on a video while hand planing. <clears throat> I have glasses on because I need them to see, but I don't need them for safety in this instance. I don't have hearing protection on. There isn't a dust collector running, air filtration, and so on. The lure, allure of hand planing is more of a I guess you could say a Zen thing or a spiritual thing where you're in touch, you're, you're more in touch with your tools while working your wood. You get feedback from the wood. The wood talks to you. <clears throat> like I said, if I use this plane, I run this across. It seems like it cut perfectly fine, but then I run my hand on here and it's rough. I take my jointer and it starts to go away. Okay, I take my single blade handmade plane and I run it on there and it's rough. Okay, if I take my old double plane, 140 year old smoother, and I run it on there, we're back to smooth again. So this is the whole debate about single blade versus double blade planes. So that brings us to the next question, which was Adam's real question. He was kind of goofing around with why do we think we're better than others? Adam comes to another question and he asked me to pick out four planes to start a workshop with. What are the essentials? What you see here. This is it. It's not even four planes. It's three planes. And I don't care whether you use iron body planes or wooden planes. The jack plane acts as your rougher, it can act as a jointer, and it can do smoothing. Your jack plane would always be my first purchase for a bench plane. <coughs> Excuse me. My first choice of planes, and I did another video on this, which, which planes to use. My first choice usually for a newcomer is always the block plane, only because it does so many other things easily, like take the corners off of a board, planing end grain, <clears throat> making, you know, hand trimmed pieces, trimming off plugs, lots of different things. Block plane is inexpensive, it's comfortable to use. People can get used to planing and learn sharpening very inexpensively on that. But your jack plane is your workhorse, <clears throat> your smoother, is precisely what it's called. It'll smooth out your work. Okay? Now, which smoother you buy, totally up to you. This is a number four. You can have a number three, a number two, a number one. Technically, they're all smoothers. Technically, you can go up to a four and a half. Still a smoother. Uh, they do make bevel up smoothers. I disagree with that terminology because you can call them a bevel up plane in a number four body but if you're not, if you don't have the right geometry to the blade, let's not go there. It, it's just a whole nother story. So, that's it. You want to get started in woodworking? That's the kit right there. 
What do you add from here? That's another question that came on. I'm not going to touch total, totally on it. What do you add once you've got your block, your smoother, your jack, maybe even a jointer? What do you add? Well, you could add a scrub plane. Scrub plane, as you can see, has a roundish blade and it's used for scrubbing rough work. But I would say most of you will be working with wood that came from a sawmill that had already been planed. <clears throat> if you only work with rough wood, you're going to need something to get through the sawmill marks. And that would be a scrub plane. But you could also turn a number three, four, five into a scrub. Another story. But rougher, smoother. What else would you add? Well, you could add, you could add uh, joinery planes, like a, a rebate plane for, for shoulders on tenons. But it all goes down to one simple thing. You need to ask yourself, what am I making? Then fit the tools for your toolbox to what you're making. If all you're ever going to make is birdhouses and cutting boards, those three will get you there. In fact, one, one of them will get you there. Either a four or five, or even a three or a five. So, it's more a matter of what do you want to make and then fitting the tools to that. Some people say you can do everything with a number four. And that's fine. But for me, I find the number four because, and I, I talked about this in another video, I find the number four because of the distance between the toe and the cutter being so much less than on a number five, I find the number five registers better for me. Okay? So for me, I have big hands. I like the number five. And then uh, the last question we're going to touch base with today is real quick, is which do I prefer Vintage tools or new tools? And I did another video where I talked about vintage tools versus new tools, and it comes down to time and money. If you've got time, go vintage, because you'll save money, and you'll learn a heck of a lot more. But if you've got money, buy new, but also buy time, with the maker, whether it be Lee Nielsen, Lee Valley, um, any of the smaller makers who are making high quality tools, buy time with the maker to learn how to use their planes, how to sharpen them, how to maintain them, how to get the most out of them. So it's time or money. That's it. It's all, uh, that, that's what it comes down to. And uh, use the other information I gave you, like what you're going to build for the size of the plane you need. Um, and that's really pretty much what it comes down to. Now, when you're making wooden planes, the one thing you do want to pay a little bit of attention to is grain direction. You want quartered grain on both cheeks. Both outside cheeks are to be quartered, which means the bottom is going to be flat. And you want the outside of the tree, the, the sapwood, on the sole. I know it's counterintuitive because that would technically mean it's softer wood. But it has to do with how the planes will dry and move from season to season. If you put the sapwood down, you'll end up getting high points on each corner as the wood moves. And it'll be riding more or less like skates. You'll be riding on the outer two corners. If you did it with the heartwood down, you'll end up with a belly in the middle and it'll drive you crazy. So, 
That's one of the reasons why you use quartered lumber and you put your sapwood down. If you want a second reason for that, it's also to keep your blade set flat on a bed longer without constantly updating it. The other thing is you want your grain to run so that as you're going back out this way, see how this is running like this? I didn't get the whole plane, there's a little bit up front here, but for the most part, you can see it, it's running out this way. So what that gives you is it gives you like petting a cat, you're petting with the fur of the cat, so the, you're going with the grain of the wood so you get less uh, wear. So that's about it for today, unless you want to know what this is. This is a stick with a point. <laughs> it's for cleaning little pieces of wood that get in the way on your planes. Uh, if, you, if you set your plane mouth opening too tight, sometimes you get what's called a foul mouth. Or if you're a chip breaker, if your chip breaker is set so that there's air spaces underneath the front edge of it where shavings can get stuck in there, they'll just bunch up and they'll give you a foul mouth. So if you have a stick like this, a stick with a point, you can come in, you can pick out pieces of wood, shavings, whatever, without damaging your blade, without damaging the wood on your plane. Okay, so stick with the point. How do you like that? Hey, thanks for coming by and watching. I hope this was informative to you. Uh, if not informative, I hope it was entertaining. And we're going to do more of the questions that came in. Keep the questions coming. I love it. I love seeing these questions because it makes me talk about different aspects of the planes. And I will get to all of them uh, sooner or later. And sometimes we're going to go around in circles, and we'll come back to them, but uh, I really appreciate your time. I'm humbled by being able to bring this to so many people, and uh, come on back. Subscribe if you haven't already. We're going to give a nice plane away when we hit 1,000 subscribers. That's all. Thanks for watching. Walter out.